Uganda. We are standing with the world as we welcome the Sustainable Development Goal that will run the world for the next 15 years. And we are standing with every brother and sister caught up in conflict around the world. I am the founder of the African Youth Initiative Network, INET, which is uh, an NGO operating from Uganda. It's a human rights organization working primarily to promote peace in Africa. And the reasons why we came into existence is because after ourselves going, having gone through the experience of conflict and violations in northern Uganda for years, we thought time would come at a point when we have to transform our history of pain and trauma and suffering into an opportunity to bring about something new that would bring about positive change in our society. So that's when we formed the initiative, primarily to help us work towards healing the history of pain and terror and injustice, but also pursue uh, a, a better future by promoting change without promoting or advancing the seeds of destruction. So yes, it's true. For 15 years we've been working to do this in northern Uganda, in South Sudan, in Eastern DRC, but also leading a continental youth exchange programs with focus on the role of youth in promoting peace and justice in Africa. And now we thought the best to do is, our 15 years down the road, we have learned so much about what works in Africa. And that's why we are now scaling up the program to establish a permanent infrastructure for peace building. A space where we can reach out to young people, mobilize them as leaders, assemble them and empower them to become lead actors, active players in peace building across the continent. We do feel like Africa has been through too much, but the resilience of the African people is something that overwhelms our understanding and we need to tap into the potential. A continent littered with so much untapped potential is also a continent littered with so much suffering and we want to bring an end to that. And that's why we want to, let's have a place where we can, you know, integrate intellectual, academic, discipline, all international frameworks with the traditional African practices. In South Africa here, this is what we call Ubuntu, looking deeper into the community where humanity drives our thinking, our operations. So that's what we are doing and we hope to have a place where we can train the homegrown peace builders, the conflict mediators, open up a space for healing, to reconcile our communities, but above all, to redirect the pace of change by making sure young people are inspired and they are able to take on and change the leadership in the continent peacefully. That's what we're doing. In the increasing wave of xenophobic attack in South Africa, but worst of all, how it is inspiring retaliations against South Africans across the continent is really heartbreaking and um, something that as a continent that we suffer together we have gone through too much to start attacking one another and unfortunately you know there is a disconnect between who really wants what change and how are they able to channel their feelings and their wishes for change Yes, there are so many drivers of why xenophobic attack is happening, not only in South Africa, it's also all over. We, in the North Africa, we have slavery today. In many parts of the continent, there's tribalism, ethnicity that is thriving in the politics and defining development. In most African countries, you find tribal government, tribal development, tribal economy, and if it goes down, it crashes. So the truth of the matter is, for us to have a future that is as stable and Africans are going to be free and the continent will be safe, we need to build development on a strong foundation of humanity, of identity based on solidarity and love, not hatred and anger and